Name the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Chenefron, if you would name me, share in pep never mind. So, what you know what I mean? This is the fourth part of our level one, uh, which are which are the Coptic letters. Uh, still learning the pronunciation uh, of the letters and their names and the pronunciation, how they're used and how to read. Pretty much just uh, teaching how to read. Uh, this time I only have uh, five letters. Uh, I think they're pretty simple. Yeah, actually pretty simple. Nothing too special about them. They don't have multiple pronunciation, just one pronunciation at a time. And they're all consonants, so we can actually make more words using the vowels that we've already had. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Uh, the first one we have here is uh, it's called shy. Uh, shy is one of the demotic letters that we've uh, learned, so it's um, it's not it's actually not a Greek letter. This one is not this one is not Greek. This one is not Greek. This one is not Greek. The other is actually um, this one works as Coptic and Greek. This one is just Greek. Uh, by Greek I mean you mostly you only see them in Greek uh, words. By Coptic I mean you only not Greek, but I mean you only see them in Coptic words, so words that do not have any Greek origin. As you know, you probably have some Greek words simply because of the Greek influence. That we've had so Egypt was during the Byzantine rule, so the, in the Byzantine Empire uh, had Egypt as part of um, as part of the empire. So there is a lot of Greek influence. Alexandria was actually considered, I think, the first or the second Hellenistic or the, a Greek cultural place. Okay, so the first one we said is called Shai. A Shai is from as a an S H. Uh, that's just as simple as this, just a sh a shah sound. If you're familiar with Arabic, it actually looks like this. Yeah, so a sheen. Uh, so that's how we write a sheen in Arabic. Actually, back in the ages, uh, they wouldn't have the three dots on it, so it looked like this. This is sheen in Arabic, and this is sheen in Coptic. And I think it also looks like um, uh, the shy letter, which is in the the Russian alphabet. I think it's called Cyrillic alphabet. Uh, they have taken that letter from us, actually. Okay, so moving on, the next letter we have is phi. Uh, this one is is phi. It's just pronounced as an F, just a simple F. Uh, looks like a Q, but it is an F. We just write it as phi. So if you have a word like, so a word that sh shy means uh, shy is the name, but also means a fees, and then phi is also it's also a word that I don't remember what it names, uh, what it's called. The next one we have now is chai. It's just pronounced as a ch, uh, like a K. It's a ch. How you say chinefron? Uh, it's a, it's a bit hard to write it. I just need to get used to it. Some people make sure you write, don't write it big, or write it small. Um, just just trying to practice it. Uh, but a simple letter just means ch. So it's a letter that does not. It's a sound that in some cases did not exist in the Greek alphabet. So it's been used in the Greek and uh, the Coptic language. The next one we have here is is kind of tricky. It's actually not fi. It's um. Sorry about the translation, that was done a long time ago by many people, so not everyone's familiar with this. So the next one we have is fei. Uh Fei. It's uh it's not an F, it's a PH. You prob you probably not know the difference as pronouncing it, because it's not usually part of the English language. But in many languages, such as this one, such as Greek, there's actually a difference between an F and a F or the a PH. I cannot do it properly to be honest. Uh but it's somehow a it's somehow transition between a P and an F, so that's why it becomes usually sounds like an F, but it's a PH because it sounds a little bit like P, like it's a F. F. It's like as if you're saying P, but you're saying F, something like that. It's a bit hard. People usually, or at least I'm not used to it. Like I've never, I've never pronounced it properly. But there are people who do, and the only difference is the Copts actually know a difference between an F and a PH. There are two distinct sounds for them. If you hear it, you'll actually know that they're different, except I, I just don't know how to say it properly. Uh, but there is a difference. They're used not interchangeably because they're two distinct letters, those two distinct sounds, and that what makes them different. So it's not like the Coptic has two Fs. It has a PH and an F, so it's, which is called F or I don't know to be honest, like I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but it is a PH. Uh, because I just speak English, we're just gonna stick to pronouncing it as an F, but if you can pronounce it as a PH, if you know linguistics, good for you, you're actually saying it like how the cops used to say it. Then the last one we have here is a combination of two letters. You remember how the X was an K and S? The second one, we ha the last one we have here is C. So it's a PS. You just pronounce it as a PS, and it's like this one. So when we say psalm in English, or which is written as psalm, uh, 
Uh, so you say psalmos. We do not write p and then sima and then almos. You don't do that. This is wrong. You, you change a p and sima with a with a ps. Uh, you actually, you only find this word in in Greek in Greek uh, words. There are no Coptic words that Coptic that like words that existed in the Greek and the sorry words that exist in the Coptic dictionary that's not Greek that has that use the letter ps. Uh, I mean psi. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's, those are all the letters for today. Nothing tricky about them. They're pretty straightforward. Just pr one pronunciation. Like you only pronounce it one way. So this one's just a PS. This one's a PH. So I have a FE, PH, CHI as a CH. Then FI as an F. And then SHI as a SH. Uh, actually, I started reading more words. We're gonna go. We're gonna go letter by letter. So we can do them properly. Okay. Let's start. The first one we have here is a shy, it's an sh, and then you have an a, then remember a yota, let's just put a y, so it becomes shy, shy means feast. The next one we have is ph, so it's, which is an f, and then i, and then a, and then y, so it becomes phi, phi means this. When you say alleluia, phi pp. Uh, third one we have here is a kh, is a chai, so we have a kh, and then e, so an a, and then n, so it's khin, khin or khin, it's up to you, whether long or short, just depending on how you say it in the sentence, uh, but they're both right. Here we have ps, so we have a p and an s, then we have an a, and then a rho, which runs as an r, and then iota, just for a y, and then a. So, psaria or psaria. So, as we've mentioned before, when you have an a iota alpha, this is the only exception we can say as aya, because for some words, a iota alpha is a contraction of a iota alpha, but they said because you have an a and an e, you just drop the e, and then it becomes aya. So, you say psaria or maria, and that's the only exception when you can actually say psaria, not psaria. So you, you can say psaria, maria, presvia, but you say psa, not psa. So it is not psaria, it psaria, and ya is the only exception. And you can actually say aya, and only in that condition too, because as we said, in actually in some in some other writings, they would and yota alpha is a contraction of a yota alpha. However, the a was dropped over time. Let's write it. I'm not trying to write it fancy, just want to show you that eventually you can have your own handwriting, even if it looks messy, at least it's readable. Okay, let's go to the next next column. We have an SH, we have a SH, and then those together becomes as one package, so that's an OU, so U. Then you have a RO, then you have a long E, so SHURI, which means sensor. Uh, shuri, tai shuri, all those beautiful hymns. Here we have a T, then we have an A, this is Xi, Xi, so it becomes an X, and then Yota, which is I, and then Sima, which is Taxis. Uh, when you say Taxis, I'm actually the, as if like the right uh, Taxis, which means the order of. And how we say Taxikinisa, or the rights of the Coptic Church, so call it Taxis. Actually, let's make it more like a T. Taxis. Okay, now we have an N, O, then Fe, so that's an F. So it's an F, and then Rho, so which is an R, and then a Yota, which is Nofri. Say Nofri means good or happy. You say Nofri Shai, so we say Nofri Shai is good feast or happy feast. Uh, okay, last one we have here is that's a PS, and then A, and then Lola, which is for an L, and then M. May is an M, and then O, and then S. So, Psalmos. Sorry, uh, it's actually just one O. Psalmos, which means Psalm. As simple as that. Okay, uh, those are more words uh, to learn, to memorize. Let's actually go over the readings. So, we have Pin. So, we have a P, so it's a P, and then A, and then N, that's Pin, which means our. Then, So. Tir, which means savior, so we say our savior. As you see here, sotir just means savior, so say pin sotir or if sotir al agato. So spin sotir is savior and then pin is our. 
here we have F, which means the, and then Yod, long O, so Yod, F Yod, Re Nefron, M F Yod, that means the, and the father, and then Ep Shiri, we say the son, so you might ask, is it Ep or F? Actually, they are kind of the same, as I told you, the F, uh, so this is like, this is like an EP, this is like an EPH, they do sound the same, they do sound similar, however the F or the PH comes before just a number of letters, which we're gonna get, we're gonna get to when we study more grammar, uh, but that's actually a proof that they do sound, they do sound similar, there is a kind of a transitional, it's like as if they want to say epiot, but because it just sounded more right, like eventually over time it changed to become, sounds more like an epf, Epfiot, so it becomes Fiot. So most of the grammar of ancient languages is not based on there is a rule that people speak like speak accordingly, but rather they just write down what how they speak it. So Epshiri, but or they can say Epfiot, but when you say Epfiot, it kind of becomes like an F. So they give it the letter of the PH, which do sound the same. If you know a linguistic, please ask them how it sounds like. That will make your life way easier when you see that Ep and F are kind of this used inter not interchangeably, but when you put an app and pay before start certain letters, it sounds more like a PH, so they changed it by to a, by a, to a PH, which is the letter phi or fe. Okay, let's go to the next ones. We have here is, this s, mu, s mu means praise. When you say it's mu of choice, just one word, it's called is mu. And then the last one is f again, and then ron. So f ron, the name, the f is the same f. And then name Khene Fran Emifiot name Epshiri. Uh just uh, one quick thing. When there is a word that has Jinkim on it, the word is Coptic. Greek does not take Jinkim. Jinkim is only in Coptic words. You're gonna learn the difference between Greek and and Coptic eventually. Uh sometime it do, it doesn't matter much, but sometimes it have a slight difference when the the word is Greek, it would have some extra rules for the reading. So you'd never whether you would know whether it's Coptic or Greek word, simply because the pronunciation might be a little bit different, it's not a big deal. But just just a fun fact that Jinkim is a Coptic thing. It only comes a Coptic words does not come on Greek words. If you see a Greek word that has Jinkim, that's a typo. Or just for the sake of pronouncing it properly like easily, however that original word you would not find in a dictionary with a Jinkim above it. Jinkim only comes on Coptic words. It's only the only one that gives it an A. Uh, so that's pretty much for uh, today. It's a pretty short one. It's pretty easy. Uh, this is the homework. I'm just trying to pronounce, start pronouncing, uh, pronouncing, trying to pronounce the words. I, was, I would recommend go word by word, sorry, letter by letter, and start writing it one by one so you can get used to it. And if you're stuck on letter, just go and check it. Don't try to read it all at once. Just go letter by letter. I'll tell you you're confident, and then you can actually start reading a full sentence. Try to read it because it will enforce while you're because while you're writing it you remember how it's read so you're enforcing that reading and then in the end just start writing the pronunciation of full sentences and you'll realize that you've learned a lot of letters in a lot of in a lot of parts like Hennefron and Fiot name Shiri then Tenoshtim and Fiot name Shiri if those are stuff you should be able to read them now easily in Coptic and you know how how to pronounce them properly when you're learning, do not pronounce as you hear in the hymns. Sometimes the hymns are not very accurate because it's it's musical. So I'm trying to just get it more with the music. Try to actually read letter by letter and correct yourself. If you have always said Efren or Nainen, just say Nainon. Start correcting yourself. Don't say Alleluia. It's Alleluia. It will eventually catch up and just becomes a second nature. You're not going to worry much about it. And you're going to be pronouncing proper Coptic. Uh, okay, kind of choice.